with a new video. This is Kyle from Crow Design, and today we're finishing this paperclip uh, holder. <laughs> uh, all right, so you can see right here I added this little uh, part of this box right here, just a little uh, recess back. Um, let's see if I can't undo it. Nope, can't undo it. All right, so what we'll do is we'll just not save it. Just not save it. And we'll open it up again. So, paper clip holder. All right, and control three, by the way, is the way to get to the bottom of it. See, I'm learning. I'm learning. Don't worry about me, I'm learning. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go to sketch mode. Click on that face. Now, the way I'm doing it, for my own personal reasons, it's a lot easier for me coming from a background of AutoCAD and Inventor and then SolidWorks. To me, just drawing lines is easier than trying to figure out this program's way of doing things, which this might be this program's way of doing things. I don't know. Uh, like I said, I'm new to this. We're learning it together. It's part of the whole YouTube experience <laughs> is... Learning things together, that's more important to me. I'm getting off tangent, but I just want to say that. I'm learning this as I go. Uh, building this YouTube channel and learning how to do this is a project I'm taking on myself after I get home from work. I work, you know, I like to work a regular job like everybody else. So, it is uh, an eighth that way. And then we're going to go an eighth this way, which is 0.125, if you did not know, which you should. Learn your fractions. All right, so we're gonna go, all right, because of the fact that this is a two inch box, which is actually really, really small. If you're gonna print this in real life, it'd be very small. Uh, the reason why I'm just doing two inches is just because it's simple. It's simple math. You don't have to be like, okay, well, we're gonna go to five, which is still simple, but it's easier just to go to one to two than it is to go to one to five. There we go, we're gonna leave it at that. My phone told me it was on low battery. <laughs> I, thought it, I thought it stopped recording for a minute. All right. So we're going to go to... All right. We're going to go 1.75, which the reason why is because when you add an eighth to an eighth, it makes a quarter, which is 0.25. So 2 minus 0.25 is 1 three quarters, or 1.75. Uh, Make sure to pick inches, or it will not work right. 1.75 inches. All right. I'm going to go back here just because I don't like messes, mess stuff. I could have made it construction, but it's just easier just to delete it because you can move everything anyways. Nothing's, I mean, unless I anchor it down or make it to where it can't move, um, it's going to move regardless. So, after we've done that, we're going to go to the pull command. Now, I've been messing around with this pull command today, all right? I've already done a little bit of study. I've already done this today so that I knew how to show y'all how to do it, which is not super hard. But, you know, it took me a little bit. I'm learning this new program, learning new things. So, uh, the best way to do this is just to unclick all those little general options down here, right-click, and then click cut. And then when you do it, it'll cut the normal way instead of trying to pull the whole part, make the whole part different. Because originally it is set to make the whole part different. Now we're only going to go two, we're only going to go two millimeters deep. Now the reason why we're only going to go two millimeters deep because I found on Amazon they have some square magnets that you can uh, stick to things, and they're only two millimeters thick. <clears throat> So actually we're gonna go to a little bit above two, maybe 2.5. I mean, that's still very, very small, but 2.5. Plus it's gonna be sticking to something, so we ain't gonna hear no rattling unless it becomes unstuck, which it shouldn't. Unless you get a different kind of magnet that doesn't have the little sticky bottoms on it. So there we go, 2.5 recess to it right there. Easy peasy. Now, <clears throat> you can make yours a little bit different if you think your magnet's not going to be strong enough. 
which I think it should be. But if it isn't, if it isn't, that is, either get you a stronger magnet or you can create more of a recess. But for right now, this is all we're doing. We're just leaving it simple as that. All right. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a new design. And this is going to be the bottom of it. So we're going to make a another two by two inch uh, square. And then we're going to pull that. And I'm only going to go two millimeters because it says I have to be big, especially if you're going to 3D print this, which is mostly what I'm assuming most people are going to do if they were to use this, if they're going to use it at their home office or at work or for whatever reason. Uh, usually they're either going to pay somebody to 3D print for them or they're going to just 3D print themselves. So that I have this, I need to save it. <clears throat> and I'm going to save it as paperclip holder. And it saves kind of weird files, but you can convert them into anything you want to. Paperclip holder bottom. Boom, there you go. Save. All right, so we're going to go back to the paperclip holder. Now this is where it gets fun. This took me a little while to figure out. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I come from SolidWorks where you have, or even Inventor where you have mates and constraints and they have a whole parts of it just designed for that. In Design Spark, it's all just together. There's no assemblies. There's no real sketches. There's just a part and what you have and what you don't have and what you haven't messed up yet. <laughs> so, go over here to file, a little plus sign. Basically, it's just importing a file. And we're going to go to paperclip holder bottom. Now, you can see it kind of put it um, inside the other one, and that's okay. Because we're just going to take this and we're just going to yank it back out. <clears throat> just yank it back out. Quick like a band-aid. Now, you have to... Click three times to select the entire object, or you can click it in the feature tree, or you can just uh, draw a little lasso around it and grab the whole thing like I'm about to do right now. All right, so the fun part begins. So in Design Spark, you have to take your little axis and move it to the edge which you want to change. And then you click uh, whatever way you want to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to orientate it to this, which it already honestly should have been. But then I want to click up to, and it'll, it should, it is. <laughs> and it should make it up to that edge. Now this is your little normal one, up to, and boom. So now it is locked and loaded, ready to get put onto the bottom. So you click that, and you see you have your little recess part. Now right here, originally I was gonna make this and I was gonna make the bottom a little bit thicker and put the recess in the bottom, but it's better to have the recess into the actual part so that you have a thinner bottom so that the magnet can actually use, can actually magnetize the paper clips. So you're gonna click up to, and this is where you'd add super glue around this edge right here. It's a uh, eighth of an eighth, an eighth of an inch, if I can spit it out. Sometimes my brain works faster than my mouth does. And we're going to put it on there like that. That's okay. That's where you put your super glue, your hot glue, whatever you want to use. Uh, you can tape it on there for all I care. I don't care. It's your part. And then, boom. That's all there is to it. And I have your little assembly with the bottom piece on. You have your recess where you can put your magnet in there. And you can put your plate clips in there. Now, I didn't make a magnet because that's just extra work and you don't want to see that know-how. So, Yeah. Thanks for watching. This has been it. This has been me. <laughs> I'm going to have to use that from now on. All right, guys. I'm going to try to make some more videos uh, pretty soon. It just depends on how much time I have. Like I said, I work all day. So it's just depending on when I have time to make videos. If I even make them, uh, I'll try to make uh, probably like one or two a week, depending on the time constraints that I have. We're about now, we're about now where I live. It's almost about 9 o'clock. So, I need to go to bed soon. <laughs> Alright guys, thank you. I'll see you later.